This place used to be the Eliza and Charles Pinckney Mansion. Their mansion used to face the uh, front of the space, facing East Bay Street. And Eliza's restaurant was actually ri lined up, her, her restaurant, her garden was lined up with Five Church Restaurant and came all the way across. And we are standing in the servant and slave quarters for the home. That's the layout of the land. Let's get wow. into who the heck these people were. Wow. Eliza and Charles had a son named Charles. They had a nephew named Charles. That's three Chucks, in case you weren't paying attention. Mm -hmm. That's why we look for secondary clues. In the event somebody sees or hears the name Charles, I need to know which one it is so I know how to address them directly, if that makes sense to you guys now, because they're all three different people. Now, the son and the nephew were signers of the Constitution for South Carolina. That's a big deal for us, but I hate politics more than all of you. We're going to talk about Eliza instead. So, she has a much better story. Let's get into her. Eliza marries Charles at a young age according to today's standards. I say it that way because if you're going to ask her how old she was when she got married, do not expect numbers from the colonial days that she came from, like 12 and 14. Think of today's standards because her husband was over double her age when they married. Kind of a creepy age gap then, a creepy age gap now. So just pointing that out. Um, again, not giving you specifics, but enough clues to be able to kind of recognize when you hear it. Um, back to Eliza. She married her husband because her father was over in England, where she's from, and the father thinks he's dying. And he's trying to bring all of his children home one last time. Eliza does not believe he's dying, so she stays put right here in South Carolina and gets married. It's 1744. You do not get married in that year to get a green card. We're not a country yet. So she did marry him out of love. This is a true love story, everybody. Not all your, your ghost stories are going to be horrific, just so you know. Um, but she was right. Dad did not die right away. Instead, he started sending her gifts from England to where you're standing. One of those gifts happens to be the plant seeds of indigo. That's a plant that makes blue dye that makes her blue jeans blue. A lot of you are wearing it tonight because that's how we use it. When she got her seeds, she didn't know what to do with them. She had to learn from her servants and slaves how to keep it going. It's not always warm here. When she figured that out, she learned how to make a dye, then moved it to a cash crop, got a hold of dad, and told him that rice plantation prices were going downhill. They were going to make a killing with the indigo. And we now have an international businesswoman during colonial days. Something absolutely unheard of. Now, that's the boring business stuff of Eliza. Let's get into the weird shit, because that's why you guys showed up. <laughs> so, uh, what's going to happen with this location, I'm going to try to keep it as controlled as possible, because this is, can be a very temperamental place. Again, this is a true love story, and it, it is also a place of respect. I'll explain before we leave the space. Uh, but with each communication device, I'll kind of give you a series of questions to either focus on or say out loud. There's no right or wrong way to do this, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, so, Pam, we're going to start off with you. Um, and it's actually going to work kind of in tandem with your device at the same time. Um, so the Eliza that I just talked about with the indigo is the second wife named Eliza from Charles back to back. So the first wife, Eliza, dies in January. Five months later, he marries the one that I just talked about. So kind of a jerk move if you really think about it. So ironically, both Elizas have a maiden name that starts with the letter L. That's all I'm going to tell you. Okay. Figure out which Eliza we're dealing with, which means on your end, Mindy, you're going to be looking for the initials ELP in that order. No other order will, you know, make this brain say, yay, we have something. ELP only. Uh, next beer box. So with yours, you're going to focus on Eliza's death. Four major things that she's pretty open about talking about it. So the four common things that we get from her, how old she was when she died, what she died from, where she's buried, which president was a pallbearer at her funeral? So the wow. age, how, where, president. You got those? Marianne, with yes. yours? Yes. Mansion's not here unless you can see it, and I can. Can you see a mansion? Yes, my mind. It's beautiful, isn't it? It is. Now, lots of rooms. <laughs> lots of rooms. So your spirit box gives us like one to two syllable answers. You're going to ask what happened to the mansion. And if you get an answer, ask for the when did that happen and we normally will get two or three numbers from the actual specific date of when that tragedy occurred i'm giving you a clue that it's a tragedy for those of you using communication devices keep in mind if you're asking questions those answers can go anywhere that does include my voice recorder or any of the three cameras that are recording audio as well um so uh, that's why you're going to tell me all the silly little things that are coming out of the two spirit boxes between charlotte and marianne um so again you don't know what is being asked from somebody else um, what's going to happen is we're going to spread out. We're going to stay away from the two cars. I'll do one or two round robins, depending on what's going on with your devices. I'm going to keep Mindy behind so I can show her how to work that thing even further. Um, and then I'm going to be with everybody else here in just a moment. So go ahead and spread okay. out. And let's see what we can so get. So we're just going to voice, like, speak out loud? It's up to you. Speak out loud or just focus Did on you, it. The okay. second question was, how did the mansion? So what happened to the mansion? What happened? And then when did that happen? What happened? Maiden name. What am I doing? videotaping everything you can nice and slow okay looking for orbs inside your frame if you want to watch the screen okay all right so your device yes. when it gets it
What? Oh no, that's a stop sign. nothing to do. He just wants me to film. I don't know what I'm supposed to be filming. Again, if you see any kind of like white streak go across the screen, just let okay. me know and I'll make note to be able to watch the, the full part of this video. Okay. So they tell me you're my biggest skeptic here. I guess so. You're just not into ghosts or you just don't believe in them at all? I just don't believe in them. Well, hopefully by the end of that, you see a couple of things that just at least are questionable. Okay. You got anything? I have a like 37 one reading.
Yeah, I want a ghost truck. Sorry, we don't have to be in the I was like, I got ghost stuff on my Go with that. Oh, me and Katie just swapped. Oh, okay. okay. Try to put a person in view. Okay. That's the way it's designed. All right. But good catch, though. No, literally nothing. I've been walking around back by there. It's just people walking around right. in a lot.
brake and hit that stop button. It's the okay. same button you used to start it. And then, like, like I said, just try to be discreet when the tours are coming through. Uh, Philadelphia Alley. So this place used to be called Duelers Alley. This is where some of the duels used to occur for the city of Charleston. I say some because dueling was illegal. Um, and I'm actually taking this out of my route this year. So I do add a new space every year and take one out. I'm taking this one out because every ghost tour comes down here. It's kind of a staple. I like to give the different locations, as you guys are obviously finding out with empty parking lots so far. Um, <laughs> but anyway, here's how this story goes. We're all going to tell the same story. I'm just going to give you more details because you're not on a campfire marshmallow ghost tour like down the road there. Right? So this, did I say that out loud? Holy shit, I did. Um, but anyway. Marianne heard you too. I know she did. <laughs> um, she can also hear him She's down like there. It's like those monsters from a quiet ears. place. <laughs> Here's how this goes. A doctor moves down here from Rhode Island. There's your first R.I. on yours, Mindy. Um, his name is Dr. Joseph Brown Ladd. For those of you listening to Spirit Boxes while you're here, which you would be the only one, Katie, if you hear the song Brown Eyed Girl while we're here, it's not coincidence. We get it all the time because it's part of his name, Dr. Joseph Brown Ladd. Anyway, he moves down here because he's supposed to get married to his fiance Amanda. Amanda just inherited a bunch of money from her dead parents. She has an attorney helping her out with all of this cash flow that she just got. The attorney thinks that Dr. Ladd is just after Amanda's money. So he tells Amanda, get rid of the doctor. So he comes to Charleston to prove that he's not after her money. And on his way into town, the coachman he had set him up to be robbed and killed. It's kind of like having a really bad Uber driver, by the way. Um, but anyway, somebody was walking by the scene what was about to happen. His name? Ralph Isaacs. Ralph has the same initials as where the doctor came from, so that's why we look for it. I will tell you, this is the reason why I have that device. I was getting the letters RI all the time on regular spirit boxes. I wanted to verify it, and we've gotten it about half a dozen times in the past eight or nine months. So take that for what it's worth. Only when I bring up Ralph, though. Ralph tells the doctor, dude, you don't want to stay here. I know this guy. He's going to try to kill you. There's a gunman inside. Come with me. We're going to go to my friend's house at 59 Church Street where you can rent a room and you'll be safe. Good to go. Doc took him up on the offer and the two gentlemen became friends. The longer the doctor stays here in Charleston, the more money he's making. He's proving his point, he's not after Amanda's money. Amanda gets wind of this and she's coming down so they could be married and Dr. Ladd became known as the Whistling Doctor. So I'm gonna tell you that every haunted city you're ever gonna visit has a cliched whistling ghost. We all have one. I will tell you that we've caught whistles down here, not to mention whistles from a spirit box with the word doctor coming right after in a commercial. So it's like the whistling part of a song and then doctor in a commercial. Doctor, we get it all the time, dozens of times, in fact. Anyway, back to Dr. Ladd and Ralph. They go see plays together. They can't sit next to each other because the doctor makes more money. That's the hierarchy of Charleston. They go see Richard III one night from uh, Shakespeare, and on the way home, they're arguing over the new actress because they couldn't discuss her at the play. Dr. Ladd thought she was great. Ralph did not. <coughs> they start arguing, and then Ralph is then insulting the doctor's fiance back home in Rhode Island. It got really ugly. They went their separate ways. Told you Ralph has friends around town. He goes to the, his friends at the newspaper, tells them to place an ad in the newspaper, telling the whole city of Charleston what he thinks of the doctor. Kind of a, you're a disgrace to society kind of mentality. The doctor saw this ad, but rebuttaled with, let's go to Dooler's Alley. Somebody's going to die. Keep in mind, this whole argument started over an actress. I just like to point that out because it's really silly and dumb. Anyway, the two gentlemen came down and they took their 10 paces away from each other. They turned, the doctor pointed his gun in the air and shot. He did not want to kill his friend. He just wanted to have the courage to show up to the fight and make his point. So Ralph has his one bullet still left in his flintlock and he put it in the uh, kneecap of the doctor. The doctor doesn't die, but he fell to the ground. His friends picked him up, took him home to 59 Church Street where he dies 10 days later on November 2nd of 1786 after refusing medical treatment. I say it that way because I like to point out two things. First off, it's 1786. Gunshot wounds are a lot different than what they are now, and he's a doctor. He probably just thought he had lead poisoning and tried to bleed it out himself, but he failed because he died. Now, I don't know how far that score is coming down, but the, just fear how I said like every tour comes down here. That's why I don't like to uh, always come to the space. Um, but anyway, so every tour will tell you, as quiet as it is, as silent as it was, to listen for those whistles. Again, we've gotten it in a numer uh, number of ways, so kind of take that for what it is. Um, but what I will tell you is if you're going to try this on your own, because I don't know how long you guys are going to be here in town, and you walk all the way through this alley and you use the voice recorders on your phone, just keep in mind that every local knows the story. So anybody walking up and down Cumberland Street or Queen Street throws a whistle down the alley. I used to do it every single night when my garage was over here. Just and it was all, of course, at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. Sometimes I may have heard an echo back. Who knows? Um, but just kind of keep that in mind if you're going to do it on your own. I also also can't take you all the way through to the end of this alley because I've actually been kicked out of here. Let's talk about that because that's the fun part of the story, everybody. So, 
also shows you my extensive research. Marianne's cracking up over there because she can hear everything. I love it. <laughs> um, this alley didn't go all the way through the way we came in. There was a wall up there. The reason why is because this is where they kept the livestock for the city of Charleston. This used to be called Cow Alley before it was Dooler's Alley. So imagine a bunch of cows and chickens down here. So what does that mean for you? Down at the end of the alley, those bricks are older than the ones you're standing on. Those bricks are sun-dried bricks from slave children. There's a full handprint from a slave child down there in one of those bricks along with fingerprint swipes in others. I used to take my, pe my people down there for kind of a history lesson, nothing paranormal. I want you to keep in mind that I treat that brick the same way I do a grave. That's the last place you're going to find that kid. I knew nothing was going to happen. November 26th of 2020, my entire group of 10 is huddled around that brick waiting for something to happen. I know nothing's going to happen. I'm shooing them along also because it's outside the kitchen window of the beautiful mansion at the end of the alley. I'm just trying to be respectful, not realizing I was out of bounds for tours. So the new owner of that mansion came out screaming. My daughter thought it was great because she was on the tour that night and her dad's getting yelled at. She was all about it. Um, so the next day, well, we just moved on, by the way. We just got away from him. The next day was Thanksgiving. I don't tour on Thanksgiving simply because I work for the biggest retailer in the world and upper management. And you guys like to fight over towels. I don't work on Thanksgiving ever again. So the next day I called my partner and that was the 28th. And I kind of told him what happened. He laughed at me too. And he said, you're only allowed to go down halfway, dude. That's, that's the limit for tours. It's residential past that. you got to reroute your group. Here's what I told my group that night, Black Friday, <laughs> exactly, three years ago. Um, I told them, I don't believe in the next story. I'm a vampire guy, not a pirate person. <laughs> Obviously, we're discussing pirates next, in case you haven't caught on to that. OK, I just got Jack Black. Jack first, and then Black. I'll explain both of those Okay. <laughs> when we get to our next location. Okay. They're going to make complete sense. All right. Love it. Um, that was a pirate thing. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's an actor's name. Wait, wasn't there a pirate? Are you thinking of Blackbeard? She's thinking. Well, here's the thing, is the black thing is relevant to Blackbeard, depending on what else we get. He does have a, a history here in Charleston, and we hear it all the time. The name Jack is one of the characters' names in the next story. So, yeah, I'm excited about both of those, because, again, they're literally across the street. So, it's kind of how this one goes. But anyway, back to, uh, where was I? Oh, the, I'm the vampire guy, right? So... Before we left the space, a person with a spirit box hears the name Anne. I didn't tell them which pirate we were going to be investigating. The famous female pirate, Anne Bonnie. I was kind of like, oh shit, maybe we're going to get something. We get up and around the corner, I told them a little bit I did know about pirates. Remember, I'm not into pirates back then. I am now, very much so. Um, but somebody else heard the number 300 coming out of another spirit box. I didn't know what that one meant. I wrote it down. I did the research for them while I'm going through their data. It turns out we were there November 28th of 2020. Anne Bonnie's trial for piracy, November 28th of 1720. We were there on the exact 300th anniversary of her pirate trial. I was actually kind of pissed off when I found that out. The reason why is because I didn't really want to do pirates because pirate stories, I have a master's degree in creative writing. I need facts and data, especially when I'm doing this. If I'm writing fiction, I still like facts and data to twist up and turn it into fiction. With pirates, it's pirate lore. So it was written 100 years after the alleged occurrences. I've read more books on pirates, watched more documentaries on pirates, and am now playing video games based on pirates because I want to make sure I have as many different angles of this story as I possibly can to see where things stick. So what we're going to be discussing at the next location came from a minimum of two resources, mostly books, just so you know, not video games and movies. Um, now, when we get over there, it's a 50-50 shot that she'll be there at the same time we are, but we actually have some pretty good stuff already starting. Um, I don't know, Katie's probably missing things in real time because she's focused on me. Have you heard anything crazy in the background? Does anybody else want to give that thing a listen before we leave this space? Because it's not going to be as quiet around the corner. We're going to use it at, a, at another space later on. Right now I'm hearing um, AC units. Yeah. Really yeah, and it's right behind you, so yeah. I'm not surprised. I was hoping that it wasn't going to kick on based on the temperature. <laughs> um, but, yeah. So, uh, I'll go ahead and let me just hold that for just a second. And just stop it. I'll take that from that you. That is a phenomenal machine. Don't you wish we all could hear like that? <sighs> that is the sight wall. I've only had this for like, I don't know, three weeks. So, yeah, kind of a crazy thing. And I bought it for a specific location, and then one of my guests suggested that we use it here to see if we can actually capture those whiskers. You guys ready to learn about Rated R Pirates now? Yeah. All right, let's do it. We're going to go cut through that tour. <laughs> Did nobody notice the specific mission I was doing? 
<laughs> what? What did you say? Oh, okay. Different key. I don't know the case. I just know about the different case. I don't know the exact key. I'm just saying we both the different keys. Oh, it's a different different key from me. What are you, what are you whistling? Cool summer. Oh, I was whistling the whistle song. The whistle song? Whistle baby. Oh my gosh. I wish you'd do that down the alley. It'd be really funny. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a video of people playing that edit on like eight separate screens at once and it was so funny. I've seen people like manage to do the most insane things on screens like pull up AO3 on their calculator. What? Yeah. What's AO3? Never mind. Is it a website? Yes. What? Did what I just said that in real time? No. Um, I and need to see the sucker. Fame crush. Where's the word list? <laughs> fame, where you at? Yeah, like a goddamn vampire. Fame. I'm gonna take a look at that word list real quick. I'm gonna see if something ties in. We just sing a song with the word fame in it. Charlie. Charlie. Sorry. She's fine. Just Feeling the Olivia Rodrigo energy. Not the chain. I'm still gonna fill it in. Alright. Um, so when the number 99 shows up over here, I don't always tell this story, but I wait for something to kind of be popped up with it. Um, so, but obviously you guys are getting the bonus tonight. Again, I told you, I never know where things are gonna go until you guys tell me what you're hearing. So this corner literally has like 15 stories on it. So the fun part for me is I get to research what's real and what's not. Well, um, yes. as soon as I, I was here walking up here, I turned this off, mute, and I'm like, who's here, who's here? I heard two male voices, but I, yeah. Like out of your own ears, from, not from the spirit box? No, from here. Oh. Um, did you hear anything along the way here? Because I heard you had it running. Yeah, no, I did not. Uh, <laughs> I'll just flat out put that one out there. I don't know. But we are near a cemetery, so I always look at the cemetery records when we have names show up here. So let's kind of get into the 99 bit. Um, every ghost tour stops, uh, the last stop, at the, right across the street where you guys are taking pictures. Um, by the way, I am excited about a 2.5. If you can get anything at a 2.5 or higher, I'm stoked, okay. just so you know. Um, but across the street is the other part of this cemetery. There's two halves of it because native Charlestonians get buried next to the church. Everybody else gets buried on the other side of the street. It's kind of how this works. By the way, your seventh vice president, John Calhoun, is buried on the other side of here because he's not from here. So he's not a native Charlestonian. Um, they actually shuffled his sarcophagus back and forth trying to figure out where the hell he was supposed to go. Um, just turns out he's not from here. But anyway, all the ghost tours go across the street because there's a sign right inside the cemetery that says there's no ghost here but the Holy Ghost. And that's because <laughs> they don't want jerks like me trying to recreate what happened. So here's how this goes. 1888, a young lady passed, dies. Uh, six days. Uh, didn't we get the number six on there? How long ago was that? See how things jog my memory? I know we had a six somewhere. Ten o'clock. Okay, we are still back at thinking it. Okay. But anyway, she dies six days after her stillborn child. It's a very sad story, but 99 years later, in 1987, local photographers taking pictures of the cemeteries, putting a book together, and he captures a full apparition in one of his pictures. It's 1987. He doesn't have the tech that we have now to be able to figure out what the hell's going on. So he sends it to Kodak. 
the young people in our group know what the hell Kodak is? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I normally have to explain it. A lot of times the, the preteens think it's a bear. Um, so take that for what it is. Anyway, he sends it to Kodak, and Kodak can confirm the type of camera that he took this picture from, and that he did not alter the photo in any way, shape, or form. So, when a guy like me that studies these kind of things, you type in Google top 100 apparitions ever caught, this normally falls into the top 100. Um, it is very clear. The parking meter is on the other side. Are you going to get excited about the fast recording of it? Have you got anything interesting? Charlie. No, not really. I think we got the most boring jobs. I, think I got the, the most boring. The sound one sucks, too. The most boring... The, okay, at least you have something to show. I literally... Because this is just a camera. It what is, am, like, just a camera. What am I looking for? I don't know. I think it's just a purple-titted camera. 
Because there's li I've literally seen absolutely nothing. Like, oh, it's like, oh, it's a light. Of course there's a light. There's a lamp right there. What's oh my gosh. It counts the shadows. It's us. With you. Hi. It's us. Dun 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 Hey, shut up. What? Why? It's a tree, but it looks like a What are you finding? Well, I got an MR and she heard Reed, like her girlfriend. Oh, that's nice. What do you guys? Nothing. I have the most boring job. <laughs> it's literally just a camera. What am I looking for? You're just going to scan it around. I would look in the corner where she is. Yeah, but what am I trying to find? You're trying to get any kind of like orb or something. Or so you want to move it slowly. I don't. Scan it and how am I supposed to find an orb? There is no orb. You just have to pan it slowly. Where is an orb? I don't see orbs. You may orbs. Not see it. The camera may pick it up. No, something I hate is when people call eyes orbs. You don't have there, to get that far over. There is no orb. Oh my God. Sorry, spirits. I didn't mean to interfere with your boxing. Okay. Lucy, hold my camera. No, mm -hmm. from the top. I want to do it down. Oh, no, Charlie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See an orb? Eyes always look. The one cool thing about this camera is that eyes look really creepy in it. Like, look in the look in the camera, Charlie. That's always no, Charlie. <laughs> okay, the thing is with these camera is that it makes hair really light. It makes eyes really dark, so it makes you look really creepy. I want to see it. Point it towards you. Okay, you hold it. Point it towards me. Oh, yeah. It, oh, that's so weird. Yeah. Okay, step back a little bit, and then look at the camera. It looks like a horror movie. Like, eyes, like, super dark and everything else super light. No, no. You d make, your, make your eyes really wide. Yeah, you look like a horror movie character. Wait, Lucy, do it again. No, back away. Don't do the thing. Just look in the camera. <laughs> no, you're ruining it. Okay, we're done. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm recording. I've been recording for eight minutes. We only got 19 minutes left. 11? 19 minutes left. 11. Yes. Yes. I think it will go over 10. When we are. What? This is only our fourth location. It's five to seven. What? Where's Kate? Where's Kate? over there. she hiding?
right, guys, let's gather around a little bit tighter. Uh, obviously, Bob, happen. you want to keep things going on over there. Because <laughs> you don't want to miss that action. And if you are here with us right now, I definitely want you to try to give us something about your occupation, please. Mindy can see what you want us to see. That's the green box. And this is Katie. She can hear whatever you want us to hear. Tell us something about your occupation, please. If the name Katie is bringing up too many bad memories, I'm sorry. But I know when you talk about your wife, it's usually a good thing. Captive? Captive. And Mindy, you're going to tell us anything that's not gray smoke. Yeah, sorry, so I was getting smoke distracted. World. Everybody was, yeah. Cuban cigar in there. <laughs> you might get directly one image, you might get ten. You never know how this is going to go. Those affected? Henry, tell us something about your job, please. What was your occupation? Let's start off nice and simple. Strength. 20%. Henry, we're looking for something about your occupation. Okay, how's your word list going? Anything? Duty. 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 Henry's not very obedient. God as the source. Henry, let's switch gears. Let's talk about one of your family members. Do you want to talk about your son? Or do you want to talk Business about your Business owner. Wife? Do you want to talk about your son? Do you want to talk about your wife? Servant said no thank you. That was a lot. The rain is coming. Yeah. Man, this is life. <laughs> Henry, <laughs> we're not getting a whole lot from you directly. Did you, did you come here alone tonight? That's a yes no question. delivery. Henry. Mindy, you got anything? There's, Ocean. I guess where the smoke looks like a face, or like there's a face behind it, but I can't really see it. No, this Sunday, Panthers, Pythons. It'll come up as a full-blown image. You'll know when it's not. Yeah. Henry. Greg. I got a Greg. Who the hell is Greg? Gift. Henry, we don't know a Greg. One thousand dollars. I don't remember. I don't remember who Greg is either. Something sticking. Henry, tell 15 us. Fifteen minutes. Fifteen. No, we're gonna go for ten minutes. That's how we do this. Henry, who did you bring with you? Danger. Henry, who did you bring with you? Die? No. Father? Quick? Night? Henry, who did you bring with you? Whoever you brought is not welcome here. I'm looking to speak with you directly. Bars? Pro bars? Let's talk about your son. You want to talk about your son? That's Selection? A yes, that's a yes no question. Station? Henry? Lead? Talk about your son. You can tell us his name, his birthday, how old he was. Technical, biblical. Oh, Finally got something? Yeah, but I can't make out what it is. It sounds it takes a second for it, it to generate. It flips upside down. It's a, it's a brick wall with a person. Minutes? Maybe a person and a dog. Like a person leaning against the wall with, or a 
Incredible opportunity. Henry, who's in this picture that we see right Fire. now? Fire. Never. Modern. Henry, I don't know who this person is with the dog. Is that the person you brought with you? It's not like a perfect person. Like the body looks okay, then there's a head with something on top, and now I just lost it. Yeah, they don't stay long. They stay maybe about 8 to 10 seconds. Yeah. Believe. We were definitely sitting against a brick wall and it was either like really bright sun or everything the wall was destroyed behind Reminder. Henry, we're not getting a whole lot from you tonight. It looks like we're running out of time. We've been under about six, going on seven minutes already. Henry, do you want us to Safely. leave? Do you want us to leave and go home? Henry, do you want us to go home? Give us another image. We'll wrap this up. University. Locally owned and operated. <laughs> Desperate. Friends. Henry, we're going to wrap this up. Can you give us one more image? Any EMF at all? Anybody watching that? Zero. Zero. I was just... Words? How are we doing on that? Still Greg. Still Greg? Yeah. Greg. Okay, Henry. We're going to wrap it up. So, no image? Mindy? No. Okay. All right, go ahead and take your headset off. Somebody want to tap Katie Thank on the Thank you, leg. guys. Now we get it. <laughs> now we get it. <laughs>